Hey guys, what's up? It's me, Azure Soul, and today we're going to be talking about the 2.5 story quest for A, aka the Shogun. We will be doing a recap of events, and then I will be throwing in my own two cents and thoughts on it as well. So sit back, relax, and let's get right into it. So like a lot of quests and events, it starts off with us talking to Catherine, aka Nurse Joy, as I like to call her, because she's bloody everywhere. Um, whom has received an unusual commission and needs our help. Nothing new there, it's normally how a lot of stuff starts. Rift House are attacking the roots of the Sacred Sacred Tree, and the Terriel Commission are having trouble with them, so they ask us for help. Well, they asked anyone for help, but you know, we were available, so obviously, we gotta go save the day. Nothing new there. So we head to the roots of the Sacred Sacred Tree, and we start fighting some Rift Towns, and they keep coming non-stop, non-stop, non-stop. We're getting a bit tired, and... It's starting to get on our nerves, and then A, lo and behold, <laughs> A, the riding Shogun appears and helps us kill the last of them. She then proceeds to tell us that she does often come outside whenever she reaches a wall in her thinking. And she normally, yeah, she enters the puppet body and comes outside to see what's going on with the world in Izuma. Now, if the Shogun had noticed what was going on, she would have left it to the commissions to deal with. But because A noticed it, she came out to help, which was pretty good. So we walk along with A along the base of the tree roots and follow some markings that we found, which leads to more rift towns. We deal with those, and A mentions that's cool now. The Ashiro Commission will be able to help nurse the roots back to health. Then all of a sudden, some sap leaking from the tree springs forth into a spirit named Kitamura. This soldier informs us that the Shogun and Kitsune Saigo have disappeared and tells us to run while we can before the monsters come back. He says only the Shogun's lightnings glow and cleanse the darkness. A assures him that Inazuma is now at peace and he thanks the Shogun before disappearing. Turns out he was similar to Kazuri back in the Sacred Sakura cleansing ritual quest. He was condensed filth, a memory. As the Sacred Sakura roots absorb filth and are connected to the ley lines, this made it possible for us to meet Kitamura. All of a sudden, an old man named Furiyama next appears from within the tree root in the form of another memory. He seems to be A's friend, a tea master, and a member of a retinue. He waffles on a bit about the old Shogun, A's sister, Makoto, and the current calamity. People have fled, but he chose to stay because he's fulfilled in life and not worried if he passes. He claims if the almighty Shogun could not stop the catastrophe, who else could? Now he's not lying. <laughs> he wasn't lying back then. He then rambles on some more about A's sister and that she truly appreciated the present and was a true dreamer and romantic. Furuyama even told us a quote of hers, which was as follows. Good things don't last forever. Everything changes, fades, disappears completely over the passage of time. And so, people must make the most of the life they have, seize the chance to enjoy it while it lasts, and have no regrets in the end. He then offers to make tea after rambling on for a while, but obviously with him being a memory, there is no tea set next to him. So we have to go find one for him, and we end up heading to the Yashiro Commission um, at the Kamisato Estate to borrow a tea set. Now, while we wait for a guard to get it, A tells us Raiden Makoto was the one who had the tea with him on occasion, and her view on reality was much different than herself. Whilst A spent nearly all her free time training for combat instead of meeting with the common folk back in the day. Makoto's biggest ideal was for dreams, not necessarily ambitions, but dreams. The emotion and feeling which drives an ambition after one is fulfilled, something innate and eternal. A no longer clings to what was lost and wants to honor her sister's ideals if possible. We head back, but the ley lines couldn't sustain Furion for that long as he is now gone. This upsets A a little bit, and A suggests since it is a rare occasion, she will try to brew some tea. She's seen him do it many times before. She apologizes that her thoughts are elsewhere while we speak because her memories have come back very strongly about the friends and sister that she lost back in the day and she gives us more details about Makoto, about those events of the past as well. So back then, during the Kanria event and the catastrophe in Inazuma, Makoto went ahead of A onto Kanria herself, but was no fighter. A used to always take care of all the battle situations that arose. That time though, the circumstances might have been so great that she couldn't wait for A and had to go on her own. A also mentioned she maybe went by herself to keep A hidden. Now this intrigued me, because we already know that Celestia is on some sus shit when it comes to their relationship with the Archons. They, they mad sus, man. They sus as hell. So let's definitely not forget that down the line for future story updates. When A arrived, Makoto was at her dying breath. A entered her plane of euthemia, 
to bid her farewell. She couldn't understand Makoto's actions at all. It was decided there and then to follow eternity. And she brought back her sister's consciousness to Inazuma. She was surprised to find the sacred Sakura tree upon her return. It had never been there before, but everyone else claims it had been there for as long as they could remember. No one thought anything of it, but she was like, nah, I swear this wasn't here. Y'all niggas lying. <laughs> Um, we theorize maybe her consciousness brought about the tree as it ended up helping a face a threat of catastrophe and because Makoto had a great love for her land and her people. We ask about our sister if she was there during the Kamriya shit. And A says when she arrived the fighting was just about over and her mind was already consumed with thoughts of Inazuma so she wasn't much help in that regard. Now during this whole time A has seemed off but keeps saying she's fine. So she ends up struggling to fight some wolves and she, for some reason she can't move a couple times. And then we end up running into Fujiki and Fukami, memories of some shogunate samurai. They help us fend off the rift hounds since they are also vision builders. They believe the gods willingness to grant humans power means they have high expectations for them. After the battle, they urge us to take the shogun back to Inazuma's main city. And the shogun promises she will be true to her word. She feels she dishonored her people's wishes and desires when she shut herself off 500 years ago and her grief had blinded her to how brightly humans shone. She vows to try and strive to do things as Makoto would have done. A seems to have some more trouble moving all of a sudden. Seems she's gotten worse. She says that she is calling her. So we help her get to the cave beneath the Narukami shrine per her request. A Tori gate opens and we find out it is the entrance to the spiritual plane of Makoto's consciousness that A had brought back. In there is the puppet, aka the Shogun, who is set to confront A if she ever changed her mind about how she felt on Eternity when she made her. So that's what she's there for, to fight her. A fights her in order to sever ties with the past and pave a way for the future, proving that her thoughts are not an effect of erosion of the spirit. So we throw hands with the puppet, and that fight was badass as hell, man. Her transformation looks so fucking sexy, like... Yo, whoever, whoever designed the transformation for the Shogun needs a pay rise, man. Mihoyo, give that man a fucking pay rise, man. <laughs> but, um, yeah, no, she kept reviving every time uh, we fought her. She revived, like, twice, so that ends up putting us back into another cutscene. And then we find out that the puppet was made to resist erosion, so because of that, her will is stronger than A's at the moment. Well, we didn't just find out. We knew, guys. Come on, they told us this before, that she was made to resist erosion. But... Because of this feature, yeah, her will is currently stronger than A's at the moment, so A is struggling to beat her. A then claims, no matter how long it takes, be it years, months, centuries, she will win and help Inazuma prosper. She now trusts the people to stay hopeful and strive in her absence, however long it may be. She then sends us out of the gate, and we decide to go visit Yai, as she knows more than us about spiritual planes, and A had mentioned she would leave everything in her hand, so maybe she can help. So Yai greets us with her usual playful self and having an eye for things, she knew our presence meant that we needed her help again. Yai complains about A's rash actions and calls her a child just like she did back in 2.1 and after trolling a little bit says Makoto's plane is different from A's and not just because she's dead. She tells us to go with her back to the entrance. She also claims it is the foundation of the Sakura tree as we had guessed with A earlier with the consciousness being the foundation. Miko explains to us that A is surrounded by chaos, so we cannot force our way in, otherwise a giant wave could sweep us off into space-time, which is why it's safer to place consciousness in a physical object as she once taught A before. So even though it's tricky, Yai claims she can take us to where she is. She says to keep our thoughts strong or we'll be swept away. We must focus on our most heartfelt wishes when we go inside. So we reach A and the puppet once more. They have been fighting for a couple hundred years within this rift when we get there, which was like crowds, like, what the hell? Um, she's super surprised to see us and that we hadn't changed in all these, these years because obviously she's in a plane where space time is different than it. So of course it wouldn't pass the same as it would in the reality. But the puppet says A's will is finally as strong as it was back when she created her, when eternity was her one true conviction. She hadn't lost a single battle to the puppet apparently this whole time as well. And she's just been, they've just been fighting this whole time. Um, A also praises the Shogun back, saying she brings honor to the title of Guardian of Eternity, and they just get back to it. We throw hands once more, we whip her ass again, and after we whip her some more, the puppet admits defeat and claims she thought A couldn't transcend her past. A admits she was pushed right to the limit, and that she felt something stirring within the Musou Ishin, as if it was trying to guide and encourage her, revealing that she inherited the blade from Makoto. 
she feels like Makoto is by her side as she fights. They both come to an agreement that just as A was Makoto's shadow, Shogun would become a shadow, and she would no longer treat her like a puppet, just as her sister did not treat her like a weapon herself. Suddenly the sword glows, and petals come out of it, creating a purple sphere. Turns out, this is Raiden Makoto, a faint fragment of her will that she left within the Musou Ishin that wouldn't appear until A unlocked its true power. She claimed everything happened suddenly back then, and that there wasn't much time to wait for A to have a change of heart. She feels bad having left Inazuma in her hands all of a sudden, and initially wanted to dissuade her from her pursuit of stillness gradually at a time. She also says that she has some sense of what was about to happen in Kamria, but was not a place the Archons could simply ignore. She had a parting gift for A, one final gift before her consciousness disappeared. This ends up being a seed for a Sakura tree, which A plants into the realm of consciousness, which resulted in it sprouting into THE sacred Sakura tree, but back in the past of Inazuma. Her sister then tells her that she's happy that she can finally repay her as A has protected her in the past on countless occasions before fading away with the Sakura petals. We then tell Yai everything that happened when we return. A mentions eternity is a concept intimately connected with time, and Yai says the plane we were in is a place where time is meaningless and cannot be understood with ordinary logic, and that the turbulence that she had sensed is probably the reason we was even able to return to this precise moment in time which is that's crazy um and her intuition tells her the reason for everything is that seed a suggests maybe makoto may have got a higher power involved in all of it seeing as she had such a gift to predict future events but whatever it was the solution saved them all miko says a had never persuaded her to this day that there was a connection between makoto and the tree which is weird because yai herself earlier in the quest guys as we just said, she said Makoto's consciousness was the tree's foundation. She was, she was either just saying that based off of what A's been trying to tell her for years. Or, you know what I'm saying? Like that was that was a bit of a contradiction there, but in the writing. But anyway, um, A then says she now understands it's because the seed wasn't planted back then. A now tells Miko that she's going to be okay. She's going to move forward. Though talking with Makoto did bring back some memories. Yai compliments her by saying her and Makoto are Inazuma's past and present, and both are indispensable. A rare compliment from best Inazuma girl, indeed. So as for my two cents, I was pretty satisfied with this outcome. I'll be honest, I thought maybe Scaramouche has something to do with the boss initially, when I saw the design since he currently had A's Gnosis. Well, I say had, he has, he currently has A's Gnosis. And he is our original puppet. And he is on the run slash missing, according to the boy Chard, back in the Shikigami event. Now, I thought maybe we would be concluding that, but I guess not. What I am happy with, though, is A's development here. It's nice to see she isn't no longer shackled by the past and is going to try and honor her people's dying hopes from back then and her sister's hope. It definitely feels like the end of any more major plot points in the Inazuma arc, I would say. I, if I'm being honest, I mean, we had 1.6, right? As the latest patch for the base game before getting 2.0 and that was like a filler patch honestly if we're being that was a filler patch man um just before Inazuma I guess they were maybe it wasn't ready yet so I, I don't know but I'm just saying I, I feel like 1.6 was a filler patch and it's hard to say if Genshin will go beyond 2.6 later on but I'm looking forward to seeing what's in store I personally want to see what happened with Dainsleth after he dipped way before 2.0 they have officially posted Ayato's artwork preview on the Twitter of Genshin Impact. So, you know, there's always that to look forward to if you're excited for him. But I'm personally ready to just move on to the next region and story arc and get a dick. Can we get a damn Kazuha rerun, please? Take my wallet, my heart. Just give me the boy, man. I didn't get him the first time round, man. Fuck, man. Like, yo, bring him back. Bring him back, man. But, uh,. Anyway, thanks for tuning in, guys. We will also be doing a Yai story recap and thoughts next, so stay tuned for that. If you like the video, leave a thumbs up and a comment or two would be much appreciated. And if you're looking forward to more content, then stay tuned and sub and hit the bell. Have a good one, guys.